are looking at salmonberry, and this plant is found both in the Pacific Northwest and in Japan. It looks really similar to a raspberry. They grow in thickets, and the berries are really similar to raspberries, but they are various colors from yellow to orange to red. It's really hard to find the red ones because the birds eat them really fast. One way you can identify the twigs of this plant is by the way they zigzag really distinctly. Uh, the twigs are largely unarmed. There's a few spines on them, and the bark is golden brown. When they get older, the bark kind of starts to shred. The flowers are these beautiful magenta flowers. They often have five petals and they show up in the early spring. It's one of the earliest berries to ripen in the Pacific Northwest, and it happens in May and in June. Salmon berries grow in moist areas by streams. They're clones of each other, so if you don't like how one berry tastes, you might go a little ways off and see if you can find a different berry, because the ones nearby probably all taste similar because they have the same genetics. The sprouts and berries were eaten by almost all of the Northwest Coast peoples. The sprouts would be eaten in early spring, and they would be peeled and kind of eaten like a raw vegetable, and they have a really sweet, juicy flavor. The berries were often eaten with salmon, uh, hence the name. Patches could be owned by families or by individuals. Uh, salmon berry also had medicinal uses. The quileute made a spit poultice of leaves for burns. Uh, the maca would pound the bark and lay it on a aching tooth to kill the pain. And the quinault would boil the bark in seawater and use it to lessen labor pains. The Swainson's thrush is associated with the ripening of the salmon berries. And in many of the native languages, it's called the salmonberry bird because it migrates and it shows up in the Pacific Northwest at the same time that the berries ripen.